I revealed my HIV status when I was diagnosed in, two, in 2000. At the time, I was given five years to live. And, and I thought that was being uh, generous because the way I felt at the time, I had uh, PCP, pneumonia, and, and other issues. I felt like I wasn't leaving the hospital. And so I felt like my family deserved to know, even though I thought I was about to die. Um, I felt relief because I thought I've been living with the secret of being transgender all my life. Never being able, <clears throat> never feeling able to come out of the closet. I thought when I was diagnosed, I would have to, I would have to face it. Everyone would, everyone would know. And so, and so this issue would have to be dealt with. It would no longer be a secret. I would be free from this. As in a lot of families, uh, you tell one, you've told a hundred, you've told the whole town. And, and that's the way it was with me. I, uh, um, my family was very accepting and, and supportive. It didn't take long for the word to spread around uh, to my neighbors and, and uh, other uh, distant family, friends, uh, people you know in the community, pre, you know, your pastor and, and uh, the clerk at the store. <laughs> uh, some parts of Alabama, everybody knows everybody. And they weren't so accepting. <laughs> Um, I had, I had a lot of people who, who, who loved me and would hug me when they saw me and refused to do that anymore. Um, some wouldn't shake my hand, some wouldn't sit next to me in church. Um, I was told later uh, by my pastor that, that a number of them came to him and asked him to ask me to leave. And uh, he refused to do that, and so they left. I watched my church uh, that had probably two or three hundred people dwindle down to twenty or thirty family members who were related to me. Um, <clears throat> so I left. After leaving, the congregation grew again, and so I thought it's a good time to go back. And and same thing happened again, and so I quit going. When I was diagnosed, my family was very supportive. They felt sympathy uh, for my condition. When I came out as transgender, that was a bridge too far for a conservative uh, family. So the HIV diagnosis they could deal with. Uh, coming out as transgender, not so much, and, and that's when they disowned me. Ninety-five percent of my family still doesn't talk to me, but just recently I started talking to my kids again, um, uh, and that has, been, that has been amazing. My daughter had, had uh, a son uh, during the time that, that they weren't speaking to me, and uh, he's He's a little over a year old now, and I just met him for the first time last month. Before they started talking to me, I was really starting to give up hope on, on the family ever uh, speaking to me or having anything to do with me again. I tried to hide this, the, the fact that I was transgender all my life, and I felt like I hid it very well. I wanted to be what everyone expected of me. I wanted everyone to be proud of me. I was terrified of, I was terrified of what I suspected would happen and what I suspected did happen. And for most of my life, I didn't want to pay that consequence. But when I got to a point where I felt like I didn't have a choice, it was either come out regardless of the consequences or die. 
because I was to the point, I was ready to, I was ready to go. Having lost my family, many of my fears having come true. But I'm happy. I'm happy in my own skin, happier than I've ever been in my life. Aside from everything else, I'm, ha I'm at peace with me, inner peace. And I didn't have that before. You equals you is undetectable equals untransmittable if you are adherent to your medications uh, for uh, six months or more, you achieve an undetectable viral load. Up to five uh, multinational cohort research studies have proven that, I will say, impossible to transmit HIV uh, to anybody. After my diagnosis, I was terrified of, of, of intimate relationships. I was married, um, had been, I think, I, I believe at the time I'd been married for 10 years. Um, and I was terrified of, of, being, of, of being intimate with my wife, um, even with condoms. And it affected our, it affected our relationship. I was terrified of, of playing with my kids. You know, I felt like a bottle of poison. I, you know, I felt like a danger to my family. I lived with that for years, that feeling. And so finding out, <clears throat> finding out and, and hearing the message of you equals you, was was liberating for me and 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 also made me a little angry that I had not been told this yet you know this could have this information could have changed my relationships uh, with my family and with a lot of people I was I was extremely uh, extremely happy to find out and and so angry that I wasn't told before that, that I became an advocate of, of you equals you, and, and I spread that message now. Anytime I can share that message, if I can work it into a conversation, I will. <laughs> It can be extremely difficult for uh, a person of transgender experience to receive health care in Alabama. For one, uh, we live in a state that never expanded Medicaid and refuses to. Um, and so many are uninsured uh, and, and so don't have access. Even if they do have access, it's, it's nearly impossible to find a doctor who will prescribe hormones, who will do, uh, who will perform uh, transgender uh, health care uh, because it's just not believed in in the South. And many doctors are afraid of the stigma that will fall on them if they treat the transgender community. Many of them find, uh, find support and and uh, acceptance in the HIV community, the, the, the AIDS service organizations who, who, who serve the HIV clientele, it's still stigmatized and difficult uh, to get people to come in to get tested, um, much less the transgender community. The, uh, transgender community uh, has for a long time not trusted the healthcare community uh, for past experiences, uh, uh, bad experiences, uh, discrimination, disrespect, misgendering, and so many of the trans community have avoided healthcare, period. Being transgender in the South living with HIV is a double stigma. Having one is, is, is 
consequential enough. Having both is really difficult to overcome for a lot of people that you meet. Um, I used to call them my mind filts when I meet new people, especially if I'm especially if I'm trying to date. You know, if you can get past one, okay, great. <laughs> Let's see if you can get past the other. But with with more advocates um, educating in the South, with more with more of the trans community willing to come out, we're slowly, gradually making it better. It's not exactly what I would like to see, but we've come a long way.